Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This video is going to be a companion video to the one you just saw on Friday, where I stitched up a new project bag with the snaps on the top. The request was to see the actual sewing of the bag. Now, I walked you through all the steps, and that video, as you see, was already like, what, 35 minutes long? You know, imagine how much longer it would be if I actually stitched the bag. So to help out the person that wanted to see the actual sewing, this video I'm going to show you all the steps of sewing, but I'm going to be doing it on a different bag. I have this frog and this orange fabric to make another bag. I have you zoomed in pretty good here so you'll be able to see the sewing I hope, right? And then I'll put any pieces that I need to up closer to the camera here so you can get a better look. I will try to limit the length of this. I know I've already blathered on for over a minute, but I'll try to keep my conversation to a minimum. I do not put music over my videos, so you might have some moments where you're just going to see me sewing and hear the machine. I try to speed up those parts because you really don't need to see it in real time, and I keep the volume low so you just kind of hear a dull hum of the machine. Let me know if you like this style of video, so I'll keep it in mind for next time I need to show something like this. Let's get to the sewing. It is still raining today, so we get a little bit of shadows. I'm sorry about that. The first piece I'm going to stitch is going to be the handle. I'm going to stitch an uh, eighth of an inch on one side and down the next. You can use a decorative stitch here if you chose to. It would look really fun. I decided to use a green thread to go with my fabric and because I was going to use possibly an orange for a contrast but my green already had a bobbin so that one went out. I don't bother back tacking at the end of this handle because it's going to be on the inside of the bag and sewn into the seam. Set my needle all the way over to the side. I have a little line that I follow right here on the side of my foot and I just kind of keep it like I said about an eighth of an inch to the side and then I just go. When I get to the end, needle up, I just grab the handle and spin it around, pull a little bit of the thread to give myself some room and I just start stitching down the other side. Everyone likes my little plastic ramp here. It just gives me a spot to lay my hands and to hold my fabric. My uh, sewing machine doesn't have a drop-in spot for a table, so I really love this feature. And it comes off. I'll show you that later. Slice my thread off on the end, and that's it. And that's the handle. Next up, this is the top of my bag. This is my bottom contrast fabric. I just lay them right sides together. Line up the edges and start stitching. Once again, I don't bother back tacking here either. I'm using about a quarter of an inch. It's like a quarter of an inch and a couple threads. And as I'm sewing, I just make sure that these stay lined up together. And I hold them down at the bottom of my little ramp. Make sure it's lined up here. Sometimes I like to hold on to the back of it to guide it. It kind of makes me feel better. It doesn't do anything for the machine. This is where I like the chain piece. I go ahead and take the other side, the next piece that I have. So again, I like it's just a shorter piece, so I lay it on top. I line up my fabrics all the way across 
and without breaking my thread or starting, you know, removing the old piece or anything, it's still here. Just lift up my foot and slide the new piece under and start sewing. If I were making these for the shop or for gifts and I was making eight or ten of them, I would just have them all lined up and ready to go like this and just keep sewing until I got through the last of them. I have plenty of room between my sewing machine and the wall back here. So I just let them all pile up on top of the desk. That's it. Snip all my threads. I'm gonna take these over and press them and I'll show you the next step. I have my lining right sides together making sure that I have the proper orientation I'm going to stitch all the way down one side and then all the way down the other this time I am going to back tack at the top and bottom just to make sure that it doesn't separate when I start moving things around and turning bags inside out back stitch realign my fabrics now when I get to the bottom I'm just gonna go ahead and spin it realign everything I'm going to be cutting out the corner so if I don't have it exactly a quarter inch from the end it'll be fine because that corner is getting cut off and then I'm gonna go across I'm gonna stop a about a third of the way over uh, back stitch then I'm going to leave a two or three inch space back stitch and go again okay so then I just go ahead and I back stitch I think I'm playing chase the shadows today so all right I went about a third of the way down I back stitched then I'm gonna go ahead and lift my needle up and I'm just gonna pull my fabric through a couple inches Drop my presser foot back down, and then I'll back stitch a couple stitches, and then I'll finish stitching to the end. And that leaves me that hole for turning the bag inside out. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and pivot. You can see here where the thread is still connected. What I do is I just go ahead and I trim that off. And again, I can't judge distances, so I've got it a little bit close to the end here. It'd be a little bit better to have started a little further along, but it's fine. And I'm gonna finish the other side now. This is the, if we did the left side, this is the right side, and I'm gonna back tack at the end. Three sides are stone, the top's left open, and I got the little opening to turn. Here's the main part of my outside of the bag. I've got my handle in. I'm gonna start on the opposite side of the, my handle, just because I wanna show you that step after. I have my batting and the right side's facing. I'm gonna go ahead and back tack here. I'm gonna go slow and make sure I get my little where my two seams are nice and lined up pretty so it looks good and then back tack well I don't have to back tack at the end because I'm gonna make a gusset down there sometimes it's a little harder working with the batting because you have that double thickness But once it gets going, it's good. Try to be careful, make sure I'm gonna keep that seam nice and lined up.
If I was making multiple bags, this is where I'd go ahead and pop another bag in. Now here we are on the handle side. This time I'm going to, just for ease, I started right off at the end and then it was it made it a little bit harder to get stitching. So I'm gonna start a little bit further in this time, about a half inch. And then I'm going to go ahead and back tack here instead of going forward. Sometimes it just helps to keep that little corner from getting sucked into the back of your machine. Here's my handle. Here's my spout. Tip me over and pour me out. And I just kind of like go a little slow. I'm using the cotton fabric with a little bit of stabilizer this time so it's not as thick as the last bag I made. You can go ahead and just back stitch here if you want. And then go forward again for that extra support. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, just stitch along the bottom. There's my handle inside, everything stitched around all three sides, left my top open. I'm going to go ahead and make my gussets and then I'll come back and show you how I sew them. I just got to say, did you notice that I remembered to put my handle in this time before I stitched up the side? Sometimes, sometimes I remember. All right, you've seen me fold over the gussets, now I'm just going to go ahead and stitch it. It's, it's personal preference whether you want to have the bottom of the bag up or this way. I kind of like to have the bottom facing up. It just lays nice and easy that way. About a quarter of an inch and you want to back tack. I've pressed them open my seams because of the batting with all the extra thickness. And once again, I'm going to chain piece, so I'm going to leave the top sitting in there. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the lining. Same thing. Back tack. Nesting my little seams there. Now I just reach around and I cut the thread in between the two and release the first one and then I bring out the second little gusset there and I do that one. That way you're not wasting because in the beginning you are using this much thread. You're constantly having to throw away this much. They said if you were to do a king size quilt by the time you got done throwing away all this little extra thread you would have wasted a whole spool of thread. Now, some people might say thread's not that all expensive, no big deal, but if you make 12 quilts a year, that's 12 spools of thread. And if you're using something besides like Joanne's basic um, Coats and Clark or a Walmart brand or something, and you're using using Orifil or something, it, it, there's usually like anywhere from 12 to $15 a spool. So you're going through a lot of thread just throwing it away. I love chain piecing. Now I just like to hold this seam down just to keep it in place. Let it go under my presser foot. Sometimes I have to lift up the presser foot and put it back down. Get that little extra thickness. Sometimes you might have to slow down and go a little bit slower. That's all. My sewing machine has three speeds, slow, medium, and fast, and I generally always have it set to fast. And then corner number four. The lining is just two pieces of quilting cotton, so it's easy to sew.
And that's it. My gussets are sewn. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these all flipped out and get them prepped for stitching along the top. Now here's the part I'm always trying to show by hand gestures. I have them all put together, right sides together, and now we're going to be stitching around this. Now with my machine, I can lift this off, take my little ramp right off, it just slides right off, and then I have this little foot that I pull out here, and that allows me to, this part of my machine, I can put my, my like a, it's meant to be like jean legs and you know, cuffs of pants and stuff like that, so it can go completely around and round and round, and I don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, you have to put it in your machine like this, and you keep this section out of the way while you're stitching here. But for me, now my clips do tend to get hooked up in there a lot, and I could use pins, but they always stab me. I like to bring the thread to the top so I don't have any little knots down at the bottom, those little nasty bird nests. And then I just go round and round. I have to, because of the clips, I have to kind of pull it to come back around because these clips get stuck underneath there and hooked on the other side. So let me get this turned all right side out, get everything pressed once again, and we'll be back. Okay, it's all ready to get top stitched along the top edge and to close up that hole. Once again, I'm putting it along my free arm. I'm switching my needle over so I can do an eighth of an inch top stitching. Always bring my thread to the top because you'll definitely see a bird's nest on the inside of the bag. I like to take two stitches. Then I lock my thread in. It's sort of a back stitching, but it just goes up and down in one place. Here we go. If I have to, I just kind of tuck my uh, lining inside there. You could use a decorative stitch around here too. Also, it would look really nice. Take it slow over the seams because it's a little bit thicker. And I kind of get go a little slow when I'm getting close to where I had started. I don't. I want to make sure that I can line up the lines nicely, and I don't have like two together. I want them to overlap. At least as best as I can. Then I go ahead and lock my thread. And that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice press and then we'll go take a look at it. I didn't show you closing up the hole, the, yeah, the little hole in the bottom of our lining. I went ahead and I get a good press to it. And I put my little clip in here just cause it's easy to find the hole. As you can see my hole goes from about this circle to about this circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start right here. Where am I? I'm gonna start right here and I'm just gonna sew a really close eighth of an inch if not less right along that hole right along the edge it's gonna close up that hole nicely if you use matching thread no one will even see it's there it's in the bottom of your bag 
which usually has things piled on top of it so it's not noticeable. Bring my threads to the top as usual. Tacking stitch. Make sure my edges stay nice and lined up. Off we go. Go a little bit past the hole, maybe a quarter inch, half an inch. Tack it. And there you go. That's it. Easy as that. For those of you that wanted to see an actual bag being sewn, I hope that answered any of the questions you had. If you did need any more um, clarification, please just go ahead and leave a comment down below. I have to say thank you because now I have three new project bags to put my knitting, cross stitch, embroidery, whatever in. It's been fun hanging out with you guys in my craft room again. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.